Hey everyone, today's guide is going to be different. I'm going to show you how to graph smoothly on Premiere Pro. Now, I've got two examples here. So this one is a simple zoom out and the other is a simple slide to the right. And basically what most people do is for this scale out is they open up their graph and they use the bottom graph. So usually what they would do is grab this handle and just put it to the left and this is what the result looks like. It looks pretty good. It's a simple zoom out and it looks smooth. However, there is a better way to do this, which is the top graph here. If you're familiar with AE graphs, which is After Effects, you may have seen them look like this. Some people, including you, may not know that this is actually built into Premiere Pro, and I'm going to show you how to use them to make smooth transitions. And it's a much better alternative because as a result, your transitions look much smoother. So what I'm going to do is first of all, get my cursor and just hover it over this bar here, which is between the two graphs. So you've got this top one here and this bottom one here. All you need to do is just hover here. It's a bit faint, so you might struggle to see it. It's just there, but you just want to grab and pull it down to expand it. So I'm just going to bring it down maybe around here. And this is the graph. Now, if I just highlight both of my keyframes, you'll see it looks a bit strange. There's no handle for this first keyframe, but there's one down here so I can move this around. And oh, would you look at that? It just appeared after moving this bottom handle. That's because I converted it to a Bezier keyframe. Now, you don't need to move the handle. So if I just go back, you can see there's no handle. All you need to do is just right click on your first keyframe and select Bezier. Now you've got both handles visible. So that was stage one. Stage two is actually making it viewable because right now it's a bit short on both ends. So what you want to do is look at these values here. So this top one here and this bottom one here. So the top one is for the first keyframe, which is this one. And the second one is for the end keyframe. So basically you want this value to match your keyframe. So here you can see it says 150. So I'm going to change this to 150. Then I'm going to go to the end and do the same for this one. So you can see it's 100. So I'm going to change this bottom value to 100. And now, as you can see, it's much easier to work with. Keep in mind that these graphs are linked to each other. They are not separate. If you make any changes to this one or that one, it's going to make changes to both. So if I move this handle, you can see the bottom one is moving as well. Before I begin showing you some examples, I do want to mention that sometimes there is an issue with keyframes and you can't push this handle back. You can see I'm putting it left. It's not working. So what you want to do is just pull this keyframe forwards and that should then work. It seems to be a bug with Premiere Pro, but yeah, if that happens, you know what to do. Push the keyframe forwards, make the change. So we're going to do that in a second and then push it back at the end. Anyways, the first thing I'm going to do is make a simple zoom out. So for this, all you need to do is grab this handle and pull it down, make it look something like this. So adjust the other one as well on the other side so that it curves nicely. Then just push it back and see how that looks. Awesome. You'll notice that there is much more impact because our graphs look sharper. So if I just expand it again, so yeah, if you do click away, let's say, and then go back, it's just going to close the graph again. So just open it back up and it should be there. Now, if you want it to be even quicker, what you can do is just, first of all, pull this forward and then make this handle drop down like this. And then if I push it back and play it back, you can see it's much quicker than before. And also, if you are using the transform effect, you can add motion blur. I'm just using the built-in motion for convenience, but it works the same way. Anyways, now I'm going to do something different. Let's make a zoom in. So I'm going to grab the handle, the first one, and just push it up like so, and then push this one back. So it's kind of like in reverse. It's quite literally flipped. So this handle here sticks up, and this one for the first keyframe is pointing to the right. So something like that. Let's push it back and see how it looks perfect we now have a zoom out now of course it's going to look much better with more clips but i've only got one to work with it's just an example now let's go for something else this may seem familiar if you've seen my smooth zoom tutorial so what i'm going to do is push it forward and bring this down so maybe somewhere like here and this one as well you don't really want them to point up or down you, you sort of want them to be pointing at like an angle as you can see so yeah this is how my graphs look like. Make sure that this curve does not go too high like that. So you can see it dips and then it kind of peaks again. You don't want that. It's going to look really bad. So make sure it curves very smoothly going down and then just push it back. Accidentally move the second one as well. I'm just going to push it back. And oh, as you can see, it's creating that curve again. So just make that adjustment. And now if I play it back, you can see I've got a zoom out here and then a zoom out at the end. This first half is quick. The middle is slow and then it starts to accelerate again towards the end. So again, if I play it back, 
you can see it's in action. Now let's try it with a zoom in. So I'm going to change my first keyframe to 100 and then the second one to 100 and I'm actually going to go 135. You see how my graph is a bit of a mess now. It can be tricky to, you know, use these numbers to fix it up. So as an alternative, just drag them to the left or the right. So as you can see, this first value, what I can do is just drag it to the left just so I can level this and then the bottom one as well. So I'm going to just grab it. Okay, at the moment it looks like a mess. So as I said, 100 here and then 135 here. It's a zoom in, but it looks like this. So let's fix it up. So what do we do? We grab the first keyframe and what I'm going to do is actually make it drop very quickly. That's going to be the first example. Um, you can see the handle's a bit, uh, you know, out of frame here, but it shouldn't be too tricky to deal with. Just grab it and it should be there. What I'm going to do is, I can't push it back, so I'm just going to pull it forwards, push it back like so. Same goes with this one. I'm just going to bring it down and keep it leveled. Maybe even push it forwards just a bit. Something like this, then push that back and let's see how it looks. Awesome. We have a very quick zoom in. Let's try something different now. Let's try a zoom in towards the end so i'm gonna dip this and then push it back there you go oh did you notice that my clip has these black borders around the edge now that's because of your graph so you can see the scale value is actually going below 100 my first value is 100 and my second is 135 meaning it should not go below 100 but it does why is that because of the graph so what i'm going to do is just click it and it does depend on which one is causing it it might be a bit of both but usually what you can do is actually just push this one up and you can see it kind of just like curves it a bit more but it's still below 100 so i think it's the first graph what i'm going to do is just push it up slightly so that it's above 100 so now if i take a look there you go looks perfect and it's no longer there and finally the other transition where you know it kind of stops halfway so what i'm going to do is push this up and then just bring this to the left a little as well as i said before at an angle then i'm going to push it back um even though that has caused a bit of an issue here so i'm just going to push it down something like this should be okay all right let's take a look perfect not bad at all so that's how you graph zooms smoothly now as for slides it's pretty simple it's not like scales so if i open it up you can see there's only one graph which works differently so this is the most common one that people use so what you can do is just pull one handle to one side and just experiment so at the moment you can see it's just a simple slide to the right if i were to grab this handle and pull it all the way to the left and play it back you can see that at the beginning here it accelerates and then slows down that's what this peak means it's the area where the movement is fastest i think would be the best way to describe it so if i were to move this bump over to the other side what i would do is just grab the handle and then just adjust them shifting it to the other side and now what's going to happen is it's going to gradually build up until it reaches that bump so yeah it's really that simple i think it's mostly with these scales that people struggle with so i hope you learned something new below in the description you can find a beginner friendly tiktok editing pack with 50 presets from smooth zooms to text fade in and out effects it's easy as drag and drop and no plugins are required thank you to my monthly supporters as always for your continued support i will see you in the next video peace